One of your primary responsibilities as the front of house audio person is to eliminate distractions. One great way of doing this is through great transitions. Transitions can make a good audio guy into a great audio guy. So how do you do this? Well, let's start before the service begins. You probably have some kind of pre-service music playing. Well, when your pastor's about to walk up and say hey to everyone, or the band's about to start, or whatever you have going on first, don't just mute your pre-service music. Try to anticipate it and start to fade it out about five seconds before the next element happens. You don't want people to notice that all of a sudden the music just disappeared and now there's just silence and now the next part of the service starts. Make it smooth and seamless. Make things flow together. Now, your communicator walks up on stage. You wanna make sure you have his mic turned on, but you don't wanna turn it on too early and catch him clearing his throat or sniffling or even talking to someone else. But you also don't wanna have it turned on too late so that you miss the first few words that he's saying. This can also be very distracting. Now, if you have the luxury of having a lighting system at your church, and you see the stage lights fading up for the person to talk, this is a great cue for you to go ahead and fade the mic up. Fade the mic up with the lights. Now, regardless, you should fade the mic up slowly so that if it starts feeding back, you can catch it before it gets out of control. You wanna fade anything in slow. You don't ever wanna just turn something on full volume because who knows, it might be louder than you anticipated or it might feed back or it might have crackles. You never know what you're getting into. So you should always fade the next element in as well and do a smooth fade, not a quick, abrupt fade. So now that your communicator is speaking, let's say that they wanna let everyone in the audience talk about something for a second and they're gonna continue speaking. Well, you should probably pull their mic back a little bit, maybe five to 10 dB. Now you don't wanna turn it off because if they need to get everyone's attention, they won't be able to. Now when you do this, you're eliminating the possibility that everyone's gonna hear the communicator clearing their throat or drinking water or something like that. But keep your eye on the communicator. Most communicators will look up right before they start to speak again. This is your cue. Go ahead and push their mic back up to where it was before you turned it down. Now, as soon as you know that the communicator is done speaking, go ahead and quickly fade their mic out. You don't wanna catch them clearing their throat again or doing anything like that. Now, the worst thing you can do is forget to turn their mic off and then the music starts and you hear your pastor singing. This can be very embarrassing for your pastor as well as you. So now the band starts. Well, if you have VCAs or subgroups or some ability to slowly fade the band in, then you should definitely take advantage of that and not just quickly unmute the band. Again, you might have some loud buzz or feedback or who knows what you're getting into. So fade that in if you can. Now, if your worship leader decides he wants to talk while the band's playing, if you can, pull the band down a little bit so that you can clearly hear what the worship leader is saying, and then slowly fade the band back in under the worship leader when he begins to sing. You want this to be seamless. You don't want everyone to notice that the band suddenly just got a lot louder or a lot softer. Make it smooth and seamless.